Welcome to episode three of The Real Crisis in Cosmology. Before I get started on this episode, I want to alert you to an important new video that we at LPP Fusion have just released. It's called Pandemic, Economic Crises, and the Energy Density Solution. And it connects what's happening here in 2020 to the necessity for a crash program for fusion energy. The URL is in the description of this video. Also, I hope you'll watch the uh, companion video to this series, Cosmic Connection, which discusses how issues in cosmology relate to life here on Earth. In episodes one and two of this series, we saw how the predictions of the Big Bang Theory for the abundance of light elements were completely contradicted by observations. But these same observations could be explained by a theory that does not assume the Big Bang and assumes that the light elements are created by processes occurring at the moment in the universe. Now, we were very happy to see that nearly a quarter million viewers watch these videos. We got a lot of comments, but I was perplexed that so many of them were about the sweater I was wearing in episode one. For those of you who did like it, which was not all of you, it's called a fisherman's sweater. And this particular one was hand-knit about 40 years ago, just about the same time I started to look at the problems of the Big Bang. I can tell you the sweater has held up a lot better than the Big Bang Theory, which, as you'll see in the series, is pretty much in tatters. In this third episode, we'll look at another major prediction of the Big Bang Theory. The Big Bang Theory says that since the universe is 12 to 14 billion years old, there can't be any objects in the universe that are older than that. In this third episode, we'll look at another major prediction of the Big Bang Theory. If the universe started 12 to 14 billion years ago, then there can be no objects in the universe that are older than that. On the other hand, if there was no Big Bang, then there is no predetermined limit to how old objects in the universe can be. So what exactly is the age of the universe according to the Big Bang Theory? Well, if you've been following the subject, you'll know that there are actually two very precise predictions. One prediction, based directly on measurements the Hubble relation, the relation between redshift and distance, says that the age of the universe is 12.8 billion years ago, plus or minus 0.2 billion years. Now there's another prediction, which is based on the theory and dark matter and dark energy and inflation and measurements of the cosmic microwave background. And that aspect of the theory makes a prediction that the age of the universe is exactly 13.78 billion years ago, plus or minus 0.02 billion years. Now only in cosmology can you get a more precise prediction by adding more uncertainty and more ad hoc hypotheses to a theory. So let's look and compare these predictions to the oldest objects that we can see in the universe. Well, how do we determine age? Conceptually, the simplest way to determine age is dynamical age. If you look at an object and you take the velocity that matter within that object is moving, and you take the size of the object, you can get a rough evidence, 
uh, estimate of the minimum time that it takes to form that object by simply dividing the size by the velocity. Because in any shorter time, the object would not have time to move together, to assemble. Now what simplifies our task is that as we look at the universe, no object seems to be moving faster than about a thousand kilometers a second. Most of them move a lot slower. Now a thousand kilometers a second is pretty speedy by Earth standards, but it's only one three hundredth of the velocity of light. So if we know that no object of any substantial size is moving faster than this, to find the oldest objects in the universe, all we have to do is look at the biggest ones. Those will have taken the longest time to assemble. Well, as we look out into space, deeper and deeper, as our telescopes have penetrated further, we see larger and larger conglomerations of matter. Now, in 2016, Dr. Sherikov and colleagues showed from a variety of very deep surveys into space that the largest clusters of matter were 1.5 gigaparsecs. That's four and a half billion light years in radius. So he found these by comparing a number of these narrow surveys that sort of look like penetrating through the universe with needles because they're looking at only a small part of the sky. Putting those together, he and his colleagues found these huge conglomerations. Now, in this chart, what you're seeing is the density of galaxies, the number of galaxies per unit volume, plotted against distance. So there's distance on the top and redshift on the bottom of the chart. So what you see is that the density varies by about 0.4, by about 40%. So this is much more than the random variation that you would expect, which is shown by the curving lines. Now other data sets also confirm these huge structures. Gamma-ray bursters, GRBs, are so bright that our telescopes can see them all across the sky at an enormous distances. Horvath and his colleagues found in 2014 and published in the prominent journal Astronomy and Astrophysics that these GRBs also trace objects of the same size, whose radius is about 1.5 gigaparsecs. In this diagram, you can see the GRBs plotted on the sky that are between a redshift of 1.6 and 2. And you can see that there's a huge concentration in the upper right of the diagram, which is about 80% above the average density. Now, if we were dealing with ordinary space, to determine the age of these enormous objects, we would simply divide their radius by the velocity. But, since we're testing the Big Bang Theory, which has an expanding space, we need to use well-known formula that have been developed by Big Bang theorists to determine the age. Well, that age comes out to be 80 to 150 billion years, or in other words, 6 to 12 times as long as the Big Bang age of the universe. It's an obvious contradiction. 
If the Big Bang theory was right, these objects simply should not exist. Objects n nowhere near the size of these objects should exist. But there they are. This evidence completely rules out a universe that's 12 or 14 billion years old. So the precision cosmology prediction of a universe exactly 13.78 billion years old is precisely wrong. Now, what do Big Bang theorists say about the contradictions presented by the largest objects in the universe? Precisely nothing. They ignore this evidence altogether. Now, this is the clearest evidence against the age of the universe being 12 to 14 billion years old. But there is more. Galaxies are much smaller than these objects, so they take a much smaller amount of time to form. But, according to the Big Bang Theory, objects form from smallest to largest. Stars, clusters of stars, small galaxies, large galaxies form by basically merging into each other. So that means early in the history of the universe, there should be no large galaxies. But our telescopes have looked out into space and found such galaxies. So, in a study by Steinhardt and pu colleagues published in the Astrophysical Journal, they found that observations of these large galaxies, which are indicated by the dots on this chart from their paper, were 10,000 or 100,000 times more common than the theory predicted. So in this chart, this is a log-log chart, you see the logarithm of the density of the galaxies plotted against their mass. And in this chart, from the middle of the chart down to the bottom, is about a factor of 100,000. So you can see that, again, the predictions of the Big Bang theory are completely contradicted by observation. In the first two episodes, I was grading the Big Bang on its predictions. And about its predictions for the age of the universe, again, we have to give it a flat F. So, I think in less than 14 minutes, I've shown you why the universe is not less than 14 billion years old. But that's not all, because for the Big Bang Theory to make any structure at all, it needs dark matter. And as we'll see in future episodes, it needs dark matter for other reasons as well. But. As I'll show in episode four, the next episode, the observational evidence is overwhelming that there is no dark matter. The references for this episode are in the description of the video. Don't forget to watch our new video, Pandemic, Economic Crises, and the Energy Density Solution. Subscribe like us, and thanks for watching.